All right, so let's have a look now at the actual numbers based on that slide, uh, slide 18 from your lecture. Um, what I've done is I've gone ahead and I've actually worked through the question on the board already. But what I'd like to do is just sort of walk you through what I'm thinking and how I sort of developed this idea. So based on the data that we looked at on slide 17, um, I've been able to identify that based on secondary research that we spend on golf in Canada about $460 million per year. Okay. Um, assuming we're around 33 million people in Canada, I know we're a little bit higher than that right now, but that number is, will suffice for this example that we're trying to do. Um, we're saying we're around 33 million. Based on additional research that I've done, I've identified that we have probably uh, close to um, 6 million people who actually golf in Canada. So that actually equates to 18% of the population when we take six over 33. Okay, so that's how I'm getting my 18%. Um, I did some additional research in the, in the city of Fredericton as well, because I wanted to see what the uh, cost of lease space was. So per square foot, we're looking at around $13, which is actually very reasonable. Um, I've seen as much here actually in Lethbridge as $25 to $30 a square foot. So uh, this actually may be a little bit uh, underestimate as to what we think the actual amount could be. It could be a little higher, even closer to maybe a $20, $25 range. So I'm being a bit cautious, conservative with my number here. Minimum, based on research that I've done, uh, we need approximately 9,000 square feet for this type of retail store to be able to offer a sufficient amount of merchandise and, and services to the consumer. There are actually golf towns across Canada that are as big as 18,000 square feet. Um, I'm trying to be a bit more conservative, again, based on the size of the city as well. Some of the smaller um, golf towns will have a smaller footprint. They won't necessarily be 18,000. So I was trying to, again, more conservative. We're going to use a 9,000 uh, number here for square footage that we'll need for retail space. Um, doing a population count of the area, the greater region, not just in uh, Fredericton. I've used Freddie as an abbreviation here, a short nickname. Um, in Freddie, there's probably about 55,000 people, but we also have to consider the outlying area and people who will shop in Fredericton as well, too. So based on the last data count I did, there's around 100, 124,000 people. Again, collecting more data in advance, I identified six other stores in Fredericton that sell golf equipment merchandise. This is including stores like Canadian Tire, pro shops in the area. I am not including an online store like mine um, in this count, uh, just for simplicity's sake, because we probably could argue, you know, Amazon, my store, there's probably a couple other vendors off the top of my head that I'm thinking about that we could uh, leverage in there too. Um, we're not going to, okay, for, for this exercise. So this is the, where I pulled my second, secondary data from. Now, taking this, we can take this and to start to quantify a number as to what we're looking at in Fredericton, to see how much money we're going to earn. So to start this off, I need to know the amount of money that was spent, and we've already identified that in retail in Canada. Uh, we know the number of golfers that we have approximately in Canada as well, too. Um, and that's going to give us about $77 um, um, dollars per year per golfer. Okay, that they're spending on golf. So now we have to take this number and we have to minimize it or do it based on thinking about Fredericton and what they're actually going to spend that, that average. In Freddie, we said we had 124,000 people in the greater region. So 18% of that population actually golf, we said, right? So from that, we are actually coming up with a market potential in Fredericton of $1.7 million. Now, this is done by taking that population, multiplying it by the people, and then multiplying that by $77 per person. So, go like that. We multiply that answer by 77. We come in with this. This is the market potential opportunity in Fredericton for the entire market. This isn't just for me and my store. This is for the, every retailer who's actually selling. So initially this number, you say, hey, this looks pretty good. Uh, 
that isn't actually necessarily the case because what we have to do is we have to break down how much we are going to get. Now there's a couple ways that we can do this. I'm going to do it based on percentages of being one of seven. Another way you could do it is square footage. So if we could count up the square footage of the entire um, population of stores, the seven stores in total, count their square footage dedicated to golf, we could do our share that way. But for simplicity's sake, what I've done is just to create a one seventh instead. So there's six other stores, you add our store in, that makes seven, we're going to get one seventh of the revenue. So we're going to get one seventh of this. Uh, 1.7 million multiplied by 15%, which is what one seventh is. That gives us net sales of $257,796, which when you start looking at this now, you're going, okay, so that's going to be my total sales with, before I take off any expenses, how much I'm going to earn. This is starting to get a bit concerning because now we haven't started to take off our cost of goods sold or any of our operational costs either. So looking at operational costs, or before we get to those, I guess our cost of goods sold first, in the sporting industry on average, 60% of every dollar that you earn has to go to COGS. So what I mean by that is you take 257,796, multiply it by 60%, that gives you that number. $154,668. This is our inventory costs. Okay? So this is our cost of goods sold per annum per the year. So now, after taking your COGS off, we're down to gross sales of $103,128. Uh, $103, this is your gross sales. This is now getting a little bit concerning because we haven't actually started taking off any of our operational costs either, which we'll take the, the biggest one off to begin with. When we go back here and we look, we're going to look at your square footage. We said it's going to be $13 square foot. We're going to have 9,000 square feet dedicated to selling space. Our now, our lease costs or rent are going to be $117,000. We've run into a little bit of a problem here. We only have gross sales of 103. We're at 117. That means we have a shortfall of over $13,000. We haven't even included your costs for your salary, your employee's salary, your heat, your light, uh, any marketing costs. So the question is now, what do you do? Well, we're not going to move forward with the venture. We'd have to decide based on the data that's been presented here today that we should not be opening a store. Now, if you can prove somehow a way to increase this, then maybe we would want to go ahead with it. But I wanted to provide this example to show you that not everything that we actually initially review, we would want to go ahead with or move ahead with. Um, and that's it.